The Talmadge dynasty began in 1926 when Eugene Talmadge, Herman's father, was first elected Commissioner of Agriculture in Georgia. Gene would later be elected governor to an unprecedented four terms, and for over 50 years, the Talmadges dominated Georgia politics. Now let's select Gene Talmadge. He is the people's friend. He'll see that things return to point. Herman Eugene Talmadge was born on August 9, 1913, on a farm near McCray, Georgia, to Gene and Maddie Talmadge. It was a typical South Georgia farm childhood. Sunday afternoon, all the boys that lived in our area, black and white, would gather and go down to Sugar Creek and go swimming in the nude, of course. Talmadge graduated from the University of Georgia, and by 1936, he earned his law degree and joined his father's law practice. After serving in the United States Navy during World War II, Talmadge returned to his home in Lovejoy, where he practiced law and started a ham curing business. Talmadge's first involvement in politics was as his father's gubernatorial campaign manager in 1946. The elder Talmadge was elected, but died before being sworn into office. This caused his son to become embroiled in a fight for the governorship with Ellis Arnold and M.E. Thompson, an episode now known as the Three Governors Controversy. The battle of the Georgia governors for the seat left vacant by the death of Eugene Talmadge brings Governor Arnold post-haste to the state capitol. Mr. Arnold Talmadge was ultimately elected governor in a special election in 1948 and served until January 1955. I'm deeply appreciative for this gathering that's assembled here tonight to welcome a Talmadge on six separate occasions that has been elected chief executive of this state. There's nothing like it in the annals of Georgia history. The people of this state have elected my father on four occasions and me on two and a half occasions. I appreciate that very much. As governor, Herman Talmadge concentrated on improving educational opportunities for children of all races. He pushed for the state to adopt its first sales tax, which was used to fund improvements in public education, roads, and health care. When Senator Walter George decided not to run for United States Senate, Talmadge started campaigning to take his place. In November 1956, Talmadge joined Richard B. Russell as Georgia's junior senator. In the Senate, Talmadge immediately joined the other Southern Democrats in their fight against civil rights legislation. From the dawn of history to the present time, mankind's struggle to achieve and maintain his liberty has been a struggle against the tyranny of government. Today, wherever we have dictatorships and totalitarian powers and communism, the people have lost their liberties not to their fellow citizens, but to a tyrannical government. Quickly winning a seat on the Agriculture Committee in 1957, Talmadge wielded his greatest influence on bills that affected American farmers and agriculture. By 1971, he had become chairman of the Senate Committee on Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry, where he was an advocate for rural America and the farming industry. And uh, we on the Committee on Agriculture and Forestry are going to do our dead level best to see the department represents the interest of the American farmer. Talmadge probably achieved his greatest national prominence through his role on the Senate Select Committee on Presidential Campaign Activities, which investigated the Watergate scandal. Well, as you know, we subpoenaed uh, by unanimous vote of our committee the so-called Watergate tapes to try to resolve the controversy between Mr. Dean and the president as to what was said in the Oval Office. So these tapes have been a question of controversy, litigation, endless press conferences, and correspondence now for more than three months. And now all of a sudden they show up missing. To say the least, the president's credibility has been very seriously affected. At the same time he was gaining national recognition, Talmadge was besieged by a series of personal and political tragedies. Following the death of his son and a bitter divorce, Talmadge was accused of financial misconduct and was denounced by the Senate Ethics Committee. Despite these problems, Talmadge sought his fifth term as senator in 1980. He was defeated by Mac Mattingly, the first Republican to hold the office since Reconstruction. In the years following public service, Talmadge returned to Henry County, Georgia, and rebuilt his personal life. He settled in the quiet community of Hamilton 
and enjoyed days spent reading or fishing and hunting with friends. He soon married Linda Cowart, wrote an autobiography, and re-entered society. Before long, he was considered the elder statesman and again ran the gauntlet of speaking engagements, interviews, and recognition ceremonies for past contributions to the state and nation. Herman Talmadge passed away on March 21, 2002. He died this morning at the age of 88 at his home in Hampton, following a political career that spanned more than 30 years. And Herman Talmadge was one of the great progressive uh, transition figures in the history of Georgia. He saved Georgia, in my opinion, from going down the road that Mississippi and Alabama did to racial ruin. He was one of the go-to people in the Senate that uh, the leadership, freshmen, senators, everyone else would go to for advice. I think he's going to be regarded as, if not the greatest governor of the 20th century, certainly one of the greatest, and a, one, a member of one of the greatest families, along with, with Dick Russell, perhaps, and Ellis Arnold, and even Zell Miller. Yeah. There's absolutely no doubt about that. It's a better place, and it's a better state, and a better world, because he served Georgia and the world. Let's do it right. Herman is our leader and we're sure to win the fight. Oh, 